two years. Two years, this DIY has been sitting in a folder, stressing me out, taunting me, telling me that if I could just figure it out, it would be the most epic DIY, but it's gonna be hard. How long did it take me? One minute. One minute, and it's no so. <music> Top five favorite DIYs I have ever done, and I am so thrilled to finally share it. We are going to make boot covers that turn our ankle boots into knee high over the knee boots. Now this was something that I originally tried to do, filmed it and never released the video because I didn't love the way that they came out. But then all of these fold over boots, super expensive designer, fancy schmancy fold over boots became a big thing. And as I looked at them, I'm like, that looks intentionally separate. Like it's one boot, but it looks like two pieces. Might this be the upgrade I needed? And it turns out it is. The shape of these are my favorite knee high boots I've ever owned. And I made them. Like I actually made them and it's no so. It's no so, I, I can't, I can't. I don't suggest anything to you guys that I don't genuinely love myself, whether that's a DIY project or like the materials I'm suggesting to use within the project or a sponsor. I will not share anything with you unless I have personally tried it, love it and genuinely think that it will make your life better or you will love it or it'll give you enjoyment or whatever. And so when Factor reached out to me to sponsor today's video, I was like, this sounds great. Wait though, wait, <laughs> I have to try the food because if the food's not delicious, all the other benefits don't really matter. I knew a lot about Factor to begin with. And the three main things that I remembered was that they were sort of gourmet chef created meals, like fresh meals, never frozen, delivered to your door. And I knew that you could kind of pick your meals based off your health goals. So I knew that about it, but what I didn't know is, is the food like good and convenient or is the food delicious and exciting and like an indulgent treat for yourself? Well, I tried it and it turns out it's the latter. The food, you guys, I like licked my bowl clean, like scooped up the sauce. <laughs> like a freak. I'm very excited to share it now. So here's the deal with Factor. It's gonna be right for you based off different things. Food shopping, meal prep for one person is not always the most convenient. Something like this is great, especially because the meals start as low as $11 a meal. So when you think about like ordering out or all your grocery shopping, it's actually a really smart alternative. Let's say you cook for your family, but you maybe have different health goals than the rest of your family. Maybe you are trying to lose weight or you're trying to go vegetarian, but your partner or your kids are not. Instead of making everybody go on that journey with you, you could do this just for yourself. And so in the fridge, you will have meals ready for you based off whatever those goals are for yourself. I love cooking for my family and I love doing that at dinner. What I don't do is lunch. All of a sudden I look up and it's three o'clock and all I've had is coffee and I'm ravenous and I'm hangry and my brain stopped working and I'm pissed off and things aren't going well. When I have factor, the thing that I love is that there's a perfectly balanced lunch waiting for me that does not require me to stop down my day, prep and dice and cut and eat and then clean. And then it's two minutes in the microwave, absolutely delicious, this indulgent self-care moment right in the middle of the day that I otherwise would have done the exact opposite on. And so if you guys wanna go give it a shot, head over to factor75.com or you can just click the link below. And if you use my code, the DIY designer 50, you'll get 50% off your first factor box. You can kind of give it a shot and see for yourself. Okay, boots, let's make some boots. First thing you need is your leather. Now I decided to do faux leather, but you can do whatever you want. I went to downtown LA where they've got like a million different options. And the most important thing is that you bring your boot with you. If you're gonna do a contrasting color, you wanna make sure the contrast looks intentional and you're gonna match it. You obviously need to match it. Now Joann's also had some great options. So you don't need to have an area like downtown LA near you in order to find some good stuff. And another fun option could be denim. These denim boots are like a huge trend. I'm not super into them, but they are huge and everywhere. So that's another option here. What I did is I bought a black faux leather, an olive green faux leather, and a metallic blue. I end up not doing the metallic blue, um, but these are the ankle boots that I was gonna go with. Now, when you're looking for your leather, you want something that's thick. You want to imagine the structure that a boot will have because we're not sewing this, we don't want to do fusing, we don't want to do all that stuff. So you want something that has enough rigidity that it's gonna hold structure. Um, a tiny bit of stretch could be a nice option if you can get it. Some of mine had stretch, some of mine different uh, didn't, and and, you know, just a different result. Now, the only measurement you need, which I cannot believe it, 
is the one around the top. If you're doing it around your calf, take that measurement. If you're doing it around your thigh, take that measurement. 13 for my calf, 16 for my thigh. Now, the, I'm starting with the black. I knew that I wanted it to go on the stretch so that the stretch would go around my leg and not be wasted going up and down my leg. So I folded it that way. 13 inches would mean six and a half, right? But I wanted seam allowance. So I am cutting it at seven. And all I'm doing is I'm folding it and cutting one long tube at seven. Now, depending on the length of your boot, you might be able to get two boots out of this, or you might be able to get one, and then you'll have a little shorter one, you'll have to cut it again, you'll have a long one, and you'll have a little shorter. Now, in order to figure out the slope of the bottom, you wanna lay your boot onto the piece of fabric. Look at where the back of the heel is, and look at where the top of the foot is, and you're gonna cut and sort of connect the lines, always making sure to end straight. Do you see I'm straightening out my scissors right now? You'll see in another version, I don't make it as straight and I have to shave it off because it almost creates a point. Even there, I needed to shave it off a little bit because in the back, you want it to look like it is totally straight. Here's another example. The, that first boot that I did, I needed to cut two of because I wanted them to be longer. If you didn't, you would literally just fold it in half. You would find your dead center. You would cut it into two pieces and you would end up with two boots just like you know the other ones except for shorter. And again, here's how we're gonna cut to create the slope. You put the first little notch at the top of your foot and then you're going to gradually cut down and merge into the back, which is where your heel is. Now you can see here, I didn't straighten it out enough. So do you see how it's creating like a, tr uh, like a point in the back? We don't want that. So you would wanna make sure to sort of straighten that off so that in the back it has a nice natural slope and it all looks even. Now this is how we're gonna put these together. Fabric glue, I can't believe it. There's another step that's gonna make this look legit, but fabric glue is what you want. So thin line of fabric glue going all the way down the side and you're gonna overlap it. Most important thing is to make sure that the top and the bottom are fully squared off. That is the way that you can guarantee that you haven't accidentally made, like created more of an overlap on the top than the bottom or made it uneven. One of the reasons why using a rotary blade and a ruler, if you have it is great, is that these are gonna be exposed, right? So you want your lines to be super crisp and clean and you don't wanna see any of the movement that you can sometimes have with scissors. Now this worked, but I had an idea to make it look a little bit more clean finished and make it a little bit stronger. I'm gonna do this. And I gotta tell you, this made all the difference in the world. So I literally just cut one inch strips with my exact or my rotary blade again, so they're nice and crisp. And now I'm gonna create like a seam in the back that looks intentional. One of the other reasons, aside from making this look much more legit, that this is so good, is that it is now super strong. Not only do we have a seam of glue that held the two pieces together, but now we have glue on the right and left of the seam being held down by this piece. These are not gonna come apart. There's now triple the strength that it previously had. Now, you will just cut off the ends. If you wanna create a little tab like this, you can leave the top long, fold it over with fabric glue and create the little tabs. I did this on the short versions, um, but on my the real ones that like I really love and you're gonna see me wear, I did not. I tucked them in and hid them because I'm gonna clean finish the top. Now, the same thing goes for any other color that you wanna do. Once I made one and I knew it was right, I just used it as a pattern. And so I used it as a pattern and started creating more of them. This particular leather did not have the same amount of stretch as the black one. So when I put it over my boot, it didn't fall down to the bottom like I wanted it to, and I didn't really like the way it looked. So I had the idea of actually leaving the bottom split open like this. So not only did I cut another one that was longer, but I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna let it split open, which means the shape of the bottom has to change. So if you guys wanna do this, if you want it to be split open in the back where it falls over the heel a little bit more, do not have that slope. Basically make the entire thing straight. It is a tube. Same at the top, same at the bottom, straight down, and that's gonna give you the look that you want. Now. I happen to have this white fabric. This is white faux leather that I had in my craft closet and I had these white boots and I thought, ooh, this would be really fun. It's like almost like a cowboy boot, slouchy boot style. So same exact thing for all of it. Fabric glue to close it off, cutting a one inch strip to clean it up, make it look nice and even, make it extra strong. And now all we have to do is clean finish things. This is in a step that only if you want, you can do. This is where sewing will be involved. And again, it is not necessary. I cut a lining that is the exact same size as my boot. 
I'm closing it off. So a simple straight stitch to turn it into a tube. I'm gonna slide that tube onto my fabric. My fabric right now is right sides together. So that's the right side of my lining to the right side of my leather. And I'm gonna simply stitch it all the way around in a circle. The inside of faux leather is fabric. So you don't need to do this, but I just wanted to see like, if it's as easy as I thought it would be, and it turns out it is. So for those of you that know how to sew, this is a really great way to kind of make it look even more legit. So I'm doing a stitch all the way around, seaming it up, right? Now I flip it inside out. The lining gets pushed inside the boot, and now I have a clean finished lining with the seams hidden on the inside and a clean finished boot on the outside. I am going to fold it like this just a little bit so that you don't see the lining from the outside of the boot you're just seeing green leather, right? This is the black version and same thing applies. Stitching all the way around, nice and even, and then I will flip it inside out and I'll have a fully lined boot. Now, the way that you're gonna finish these off is dependent on the leather. This black leather is really thin and I thought I can probably just press it. I don't want any seams, I don't want any stitches, so I'm gonna press it. The green leather, however, is much thicker and I don't think I'd be able to press it. So I decided to test stitching it down, sewing it with like a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around to kind of top stitch it. And it ended up looking really great. So for this leather, which was much thicker, I think that this was beautiful and a great way to go. You could totally fold it and add a little bit of fabric glue if you don't know how to sew in order to keep this being an entirely no sew project. Now here you can see, in order to press it, you wanna put your iron on a low setting, use a cloth to protect it, and just kind of go back and forth, back and forth until you've pressed it into something that has a little bit more shape. For this white one, it's so thin that it pressed perfectly. I mean, I got really, really crisp edges because of how thin it was, and I decided to tack it down because I didn't want it to like, open up on me and like, you know, unravel or, or unfold rather. So I added the tiniest bit of glue, I pressed it in and it basically was like a stitch without having a stitch because I don't want to see any exposed seams or lines. I want it to just look like a clean, crisp fold. And that's exactly what I got. All right, you guys, let's, um, let's try these on. I can't wait for you to see this. I'm flabbergasted. I'm gonna model these. I'm gonna model these for you how fast and how easy and how beautiful these are. Um, I'm very excited. I hope that you guys give this one a shot. If you do, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Orly Shanny. Comment down below if you have any questions. Um, and if you're brand new, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I do brand new DIYs every single week and I'd love to have you. I love you guys. Bye.